Starting from nothing and ending up with a final high fidelity design takes a lot of different skills and knowledge. But in terms of UI design, I've broken it down into a simple process. So let's look at the six stages of UI design. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you become a more skillful and mindful designer. So this video is meant to be a high level overview of the entire UI design process. It's important to keep in mind that in order to make your user interfaces usable and beautiful, you'll need to have a strong understanding of visual design principles like visual hierarchy, usability heuristics, color, and typography. And you'll need to start with good, insightful user research and data to back up your design decisions and decide what needs to be in your user interface designs and how it should all work and flow together. But I'll leave that part for another video. So once you've successfully defined your user's problem, your constraints, requirements, and features, then you're ready to start looking at how you can visually represent the components, state changes, and interactions at different levels in order to make your product a reality. Stage one, sketching. This is the quickest, lowest cost, and lowest commitment way to kick off your designs. It gets the high level, top of mind ideas out of your head and onto your paper or screen. Generally, these are really rough, and if they look pretty bad, then you're probably on the right track. It's something you should be able to do in a fairly short amount of time on paper, a whiteboard, or using a wireframe or design app. There is no right or wrong way to do this, but here are some common things that they could include. Outlined boxes to represent the general containers and areas that need to be placed on the page. Placeholder boxes to represent images, text, and graphics. And these can be done in low, mid, or high fidelity depending on the project needs at this stage. The purpose is to start off the conversation. It helps to clarify and define layout, features, and allows you to change ideas quickly and iterate. It also helps you visualize how screens might look on different device sizes and in different contexts. Some tools that you can use in the sketching process are paper and pen, whiteboard, sketch pad, Figma jam, or various apps for your iPad or tablet. Stage two, wireframes or gray boxing. This is what things look like before visual design principles have been applied. It's where you can start to see the general layout and elements taking shape. What's on it? This is things like filler content, alorum ipsum, or actual text, which I highly recommend, placeholder images or stock images, and this can usually be done in your design software using an existing UI kit to kick things off or done from scratch. The purpose of this stage is to visualize the general layout. It's to build trust with stakeholders and help them see those initial ideas a little bit more fleshed out before moving on. It's a fast and cheap way to create initial ideas in a little bit more depth or to show low or mid fidelity screen designs. Some great tools for this are things like Just In Mind's free wireframing tool, existing wireframe kits that you can use in your design apps, or something like Balsamic. Stage three, component design. Dynamic user interfaces, unlike static website landing pages or marketing sites, require you to think through states and conditionals. Component design deals with things like symbols, such as buttons and badges, element states like button to hover states or clicked states, components like tables, lists, cards, and forms, and shows actual texts and images. The purpose is to plan the usability, uncover accessibility and responsive problems, translate ideas into consistent elements that can be shared with engineers, and more easily and accurately discussed and shared across teams. Great tools for stage three are design apps like Sketch, Figma, and Adobe XD. Stage four, user flows and task flows. Now it's time to decide how users will get from one screen to another. What happens when they click this, or if they forget to add in some information? 
This is about understanding users' mental models and your system's model and the orchestration of all the pathways and responses that your interface will provide. This might take the wireframes and put them together with arrows into wire flows. You may have flow charts and conditional statements. The purpose is to show navigation routes, to check for missing states and information, and to visualize entry, exit, and decision points for the user or customer journey. Some examples of helpful tools at this stage are flow map or wire flow, or Justin Mind's wireframing tool. Stage five, mock-up or high fidelity designs. This stage should show things exactly as they will appear in the final product. Now that you have all of the under the hood stuff worked out, it's time to put your best graphic copy and visual design skills to the test. This is where you make every pixel as perfect and measured as you can and where you can add your own unique brand aesthetic and thematic elements. The purpose is to create pixel perfection, to create consistency across your typography and components, to add a sense of your brand by selecting final images or creating final graphics. It's time to add in that good real copy in order to get final approval from stakeholders. Some of the tools you'll be using here are Sketch or Figma or Adobe XD, maybe Dropbox for sharing files or some other cloud sharing platform, stock photography sites, and maybe illustrative programs for custom graphics. Stage six, prototyping. This ties everything together and shows exactly how the app is expected to look and behave. What's on it? all of the important screens in a high fidelity. This should show target points to mimic what it will be like when the user interacts with the real thing. The purpose is to link together all of the screens and flows in a simulated environment. It's to ensure that everything looks, works well, and flows as intended before it goes to production. This can be considered the pre-code or no-code version of your product. Some of the best tools include design apps like Envision or the baked-in prototyping solutions from your design app like Sketch, Figma, or Adobe XD. So keep in mind that these stages are not necessarily a linear process. You may be asked to take the wireframes from stage two and jump into stage six and create a prototype from them. It all depends on the unique requirements, the time, and the budget of the project you're working on. So it's best to get familiar with all of these stages and and get comfortable jumping back and forth between them. If you wanna get better at doing this sort of thing and mastering UI and design principles, come check out our programs at designerup.co. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon.